Hello everybody and welcome to the ninth meeting of the beer evaluation course. This time we will discuss troubleshooting beer. Just wanted to remind you that if you like the video, please hit the like button and if you have any questions, please comment on the video and I will answer. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get notified when my next videos come out. In addition, if you haven't followed me on my social media, you can see them on the screen changing right now or find them in the description below. And now, without further ado, let's get to our presentation of the day about troubleshooting beer. This is the ninth presentation of the beer evaluation course and the last one. And in it, we will focus on troubleshooting beer. This is the layout of today's presentation. We will talk about why we should troubleshoot beers, common off flavors, and how the brewer can control them. Let's start by returning to the definition of evaluation. Evaluation is a systematic, structured assessment of something or a determination of merit, worth, or significance against a set of standards. Not all beer is made in a good and optimal way. Therefore, a good beer judge should be able to identify, describe, and analyze common problems in beer and provide the brewer with feedback on possible solutions to the identified problems. But a judge should be careful not to become a fault finder and look for faults and problems where there are none. To be able to give feedback for improvement, a judge needs to understand and be able to detect the possible off flavors and know how to fix them. We saw that part of a complete beer evaluation is to give feedback to the brewers about how they can improve their beer. Now we will discuss flavors and off flavors that can appear in beer and how the brewer can affect them. This presentation is very important for the feedback competency that is worth 20 points in the beer tasting exam. The first compound we should know is acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is a colorless but very volatile compound that is formed when alcohol oxidizes. This compound has an aroma of green apples, cut grass, green leaves, or latex paint. The common causes of acetaldehyde formation are premature removal of the beer from the yeast, bacterial contamination, mainly by Zimomonas or Acetobacter, which are known to be prolific producers of acetaldehyde, lack of oxidation of the wort before fermentation, and post-fermentation oxidation. But yeast can turn acetaldehyde into alcohol. So, in order to lower acetaldehyde levels, we will suggest to leave the beer on the yeast until fermentation has finished and the yeast cleaned the beer. Oxidize the wort properly before fermentation and avoid any splashes and oxidation post-fermentation. The next flavor is alcohol. The compound responsible for this flavor is ethanol and other alcohols. Alcohol can be perceived as hot, spicy, or venous, and usually leaves behind a warm or burning feeling on the palate and aftertaste as increased bitterness. Alcohol warmth can be created when the beer was fermented at too high temperature, did not have enough time to age and mature, if there was a bad fermentation, too high initial gravity, or too many fermentable sugars, over attenuation and contamination. The brewer can avoid these flavors with lower fermentation temperatures, use less sugars in the wort, use a yeast strain with lower attenuation, check the health of the yeast before pitching, make sure that there are enough yeast nutrients and oxygen, check if there was contamination and make sure to pitch enough cells of yeast. After alcohol, let's talk about astringency or tannins. These flavors are caused by polyphenols that create astringency. We perceive these flavors as astringent, causing a puckering sensation in the mouth, a harsh sensation that lingers, increased bitterness, or a dry finish. The reasons why we get high tannins in beer will usually be extraction from the malt, husks, or hops, additions of wood, astringent, or bitter herbs, spices, or other tannic fruits found in the beer. To avoid tannin extraction, the brewer shouldn't overcrush the grains, avoid boiling the grains, 
make sure that sparge water temperature is below 76 degrees centigrade and that the pH is lower than 6.0. And don't over sparge. In addition, the brewers can use water with less sulfate, lower dark rains usage, and use less whole hops. If spices or fruits with tannins are used, the brewers should pay attention to avoid raw spices, fruit pits, and fruit skins which contain high levels of tannins. The next off flavor is a rather rare one, butyric acid. It smells like baby vomit. Butyric acid is an acid that is formed during the yeast growth phase as part of the cells creating new cell membranes. If there is not enough oxygen available for the yeast, they will be unable to complete the creation of sterols and butyric acid will be left in the beer. To avoid leftover butyric acid after fermentation, the brewers should make sure that there is sufficient oxygen at the first stage of fermentation. Next is diacetyl. Diacetyl is a compound that gives aroma, flavor, and slick feeling on the palate of butter. Diacetyl is perceived as butter, butter caramel, movie popcorn, or the aroma and taste of toffee or butterscotch. Sometimes it will be accompanied by a smooth, slick feeling on the tongue. The causes of the appearance of diacetyl in beer can be too early separation of the beer from the yeast, low levels of yeast nutrients and oxygen in the wort, and bacteria that produces lactic acid such as pediococcus. To avoid the appearance of diacetyl in the beer, the brewer can try a different yeast strain, oxidize the wort before fermentation, lower the temperature of the main fermentation and the lag phase. Do a secondary warmer and or longer fermentation, use healthy yeast in sufficient quantity, make sure that there are enough yeast nutrients in the wort, and check if there is an infection. The beer should be allowed to rest on the yeast until it finishes fermenting. The brewer shouldn't transfer the beer and not expel the yeast too soon. Make sure that they don't cold crush too soon, age the beer at low temperatures, and avoid the addition of oxygen during fermentation. The next off flavor is dimethyl sulfide, or DMS for short. This compound is perceived as cooked corn, rotten cabbage, or shrimp stock. This compound is created during the boil from precursors coming from the malt. This reaction happens at above 60 degrees Celsius. The good part is that this compound is highly volatile and will evaporate during the boil. To avoid this compound in the beer, the brewer should perform a long rolling open boil. Also, Pilsner malt contains eight more times SMM than the pale ale malt due to lower kilning temperature. So, if you're using Pilsner malt, increase the boil time to evaporate more DMS. Also, the brewer should check for infections and make sure that they use healthy and vigorous yeast. The next flavor and aroma compounds we'll talk about are esters. Esters give fruit aromas and flavors. It can be apples, banana, pear, grapes, strawberries, citrus, and more. The reasons for the appearance of more esters in beer are high fermentation temperatures, yeast strain, low nutrient fermentation, lack of oxygen, and high gravity. To lower the amount of esters in beer, the brewer should use lower fermentation temperatures, try to use a cleaner yeast strain, oxygenate the wort properly before fermentation, lower the initial gravity, and make sure that there is a sufficient amount of yeast. The next aroma is the smell of farmyard or barnyard, or by its chemical name, indol. We perceive this as farmyard, barn, horse blanket, leather, old horse, wet dog, and lots of other nice descriptions. If it appears in high levels, the causes of it will usually be infection by bacteria or Brettanomyces. Suggest to the brewer to check sanitation. Now to floral flavor and aroma. We will usually feel this as the blossoming of flowers and the aroma and taste of perfume. In most cases, this will be fine in beer depending on its source and style. The main cause are oils that are imparted by certain hop varieties. To avoid this flavor, suggest to the brewer to avoid using hops varieties that are rich with geraniol. 
The next off flavor that can appear in beer is earthy flavor. This flavor and aroma are perceived as soil or algae. This flavor comes from water that are contaminated with algae. It has a flavor of wet soil and river algae. To avoid this off flavor, the brewer should use clean water. Now let's talk about grassy aroma and flavor. This aroma is caused by an essential oil called myrcene. This compound is perceived by us as a freshly cut grass or green leaves. The causes of a large amount of myrcene in beer is large quantity of green hops material used in beer or old or dry ingredients. To lower the myrcene's quantity in beer, the brewer should lower the amount of dry hops or the amount of whole hops in contact with the beer. The brewer should also avoid oxidation of the beer and make sure that the malt and hops are fresh. Another aroma and flavor that can come from hops is isovaleric acid. This acid has an aroma of aged or spoiled cheese, Parmesan cheese, or sweaty socks. The cause of this aroma in beer is old and oxidized hops. To avoid this compound in the beer, the brewer should make sure that they use fresh hops. If they use old hops on purpose, such as in Lambic, they should boil for a few hours to evaporate this compound from the wort. If it's already present, then the brewers can add breath that can convert this material to ethyl isovalerate, which has a fruity aroma. The next aroma, which also comes from hops, is skunky aroma. This aroma is defined as mercaptobenzothiazole. This compound smells like a skunk or cat urine. This compound appears in beer as a result of exposure to UV light. The UV rays break the molecules of alpha acids. Next, the fragments react with sulfur that is found in the beer and form mercaptobenzothiazole. To avoid the formation of this compound, the brewer should avoid exposure of the beer to light after they added hops. Also, they should avoid transparent or green bottles to package the beer. And finally, the brewers should avoid using cluster hops in the beer. The next aroma and flavor originate from the yeast. This is the aroma of chlorophenols. We perceive chlorophenols as a disinfectant or drug cabinet. The source of these compounds is water that contains chlorine or chloramine. The chlorine and chloramine reacts with phenols that the yeast produce to form chlorophenols. To avoid these compounds in the beer, the brewers should make sure that there are no chlorine or chloramine in the brewing water and use carbon filters and or reverse osmosis to avoid them. Also, avoid using chlorine-based disinfectants, avoid polyphenols extraction from the malt and hops, and make sure that there is no infection. The next flavor is metallic. We perceive it as water that contains metal ions and especially iron. It can also have the taste of iron, copper, coins, or blood. The causes of the appearance of this flavor are contact with metal, too much yeast nutrients, rusty equipment, unclean equipment, and other factors that can add metals to the beer. To avoid, make sure that the water does not contain metal ions, reduce the amount of yeast nutrients, check that the equipment is not rusted and properly passivated, and wash any disinfectant if necessary according to the manufacturer's instructions. The next flavor and aroma are moldy flavors and aromas. These are perceived like old bread, mold like a dump, earthy cellar, or like compost. The causes of their presence can be oxidation, mold growth on ingredients and or packaging materials, stale water with raw materials, bacterial contamination, or it can be bottles with TCA infected corks. To avoid this, the brewer should make sure to avoid oxidation of the beer after fermentation, check the sanitation of the equipment, avoid use of peat malt, test the water to make sure it does not have a stale aroma, and use fresh and not rotten ingredients. If it has already appeared, there is nothing to do with the beer.
The next aroma and flavor we will talk about are the aroma of oxidation. In most cases, this aroma will strike us as the aroma of wet cardboard. We perceive it as stale, wet paper or cardboard, both in aroma and flavor. But sometimes oxidation can contribute flavors of sherry, caramel, leather, nuts, or damaged or dried fruits, sometimes with increased bitterness and usually with a darker palate. This is normal in beers depending on the style, strength, and characteristics of the oxidation. To avoid this problem, the brewers should check their processes for places where oxygen can enter, make sure that there are no splashes during the transfers or packaging, check the caps and seals of the bottles or barrels for a good fit, wash bottles with CO2 before bottling, keep the beer refrigerated and drink it fresh and use antioxidants such as sulfates and ascorbic acid. The next aromas and flavors come from the yeast and are a group of substances called phenols. Phenols are a large group of organic chemical substances and they can come in different forms from pleasant aromas such as spices, certain herbs, cloves, black pepper or vanilla, or alternatively unpleasant such as smoke, plastic, band-aid, mouthwash, medical antiseptic, or a medicine cabinet. Presence of phenols is normal in beers which use POF plus yeast, such as German Weissbier or Belgian beers. The other place these compounds are suitable are in beers with spices. The appearance of these compounds can be a result of yeast strain, wild yeast, or bacterial contamination. If chlorine or chloramine is present, phenols can combine with the chlorine to form chlorophenols. These have a strong antiseptic aroma, as I said before. Additions of fruits and spices can also add phenols, as well as the use of wood and any cleaning detergents which require washing. The next aroma to discuss also comes from the yeast. These are the aromas of bad solvents or alcohols. We perceive these aromas as warm and even burning sensation on the palate that remains for the finish and the aftertaste. It can also appear as acetone or a strong detergent in both flavor and aroma. This is a fault in any beer. To avoid these aromas and flavors of bad alcohols, lower the fermentation temperatures, add enough yeast, and make sure that they are healthy and active with enough nutrients and oxygen. Be more careful about sanitation and lower the initial gravity. And now let's talk about acidity. Acidity is a primary taste that happens when the pH is too low. Acidity is perceived as tartness on the palate or at high levels can appear as a sharp and clean taste of acid. The acidity in the beer, if apparent, should balance the sweetness to create a drink that is on one hand not too sweet and on the other hand not too acidic. Acidity should never be harsh or cutting and must be in balance that suits the style and sweetness the brewer was aiming for. Acidity will normally be present in styles that have very little bitterness. If bitterness is present along with high acidity, it will create a harsh flavor of an unbalanced drink. The causes of acidity can be the use of very sour fruits, contamination mainly by bread, acetobacter, and a wide array of lactobacilli and pediococci, or yeast strain selection. In order to avoid high acidity, the brewer should check that the beer is not contaminated. If you are presented with an acidic beer, Remember that the perception of acidity is greatly influenced by sweetness, so the brewer can sweeten the beer to lower the perception of acidity. In addition, lowering carbonation levels and raising the serving temperature can also make the beer feel sweeter. The brewer can also lower other ingredients that affect the balance, such as bitterness. The next aroma and flavor are smoky flavor and aroma. These flavors are also caused by phenols. These compounds can be perceived as smoked things, like sausages or even charcoal or burnt. Such flavors are allowed in Rauchbeers. 
The causes of such flavors can be smoked malts, scorched sugars, excessive use of dark malts, or a bacterial infection. To avoid, the brewers should check that there is no contamination by wild yeast or bread, and check that there is no scorching during the boil. Now, let's discuss the aromas and flavors of sulfur. The aroma of sulfur can come from several compounds that contain sulfur and will be perceived in the flavor, but mainly in the aroma. Common sulfuric aromas are of hydrogen sulfide, which usually brings an aroma of rotten eggs or sewage, dimethyl sulfide that brings the aroma of cooked corn or cooked vegetables, methanethyl that brings aroma of manure, stagnant water, or clogged drains, sulfur dioxide, which gives an aroma of burnt match and in high concentration can hurt the nose, and ethyl mercaptan, which gives an aroma of skunk, onion, or garlic. As you can see, sulfur compounds are commonly unpleasant. High levels of sulfuric compounds are not acceptable in any beer. The causes of the appearance of sulfuric compounds are most often by the yeast. The causes of the appearance of sulfuric compounds are most often the yeast. The yeast creates sulfur during fermentation, but it is expelled as a gas from the beer. At the end of the fermentation, the yeast cleans what is left as well. But if the yeast did not work properly or underwent autolysis, the sulfur will remain in the beer. A lack of nutrients and oxygen can cause the yeast to excrete more sulfur. And sulfuric compounds can also be in the beer, water, or additives. Therefore, the brewer should make sure that the yeast are healthy and that they pitched enough cells. Make sure that there are enough nutrients, make sure that there is enough oxygen, make sure that there is no serious temperature changes, consider changing to a cleaner yeast strain and separate the beer from the yeast after the second fermentation is finished. Make sure that there is no contamination and check yeast health prior to pitching. Now we will move on to spicy flavors. Flavors of spices are also types of fennels. We perceive these flavors as clove, black pepper, vanilla, and other spices. The causes of such flavors can be the use of yeast that produce fennels, such as German wheat beers that produce the taste and aroma of cloves. This can be caused by too high fermentation temperatures or the addition of spices. To control the appearance of fennels, the brewer should consider using a different yeast strain that cannot produce fennels, lower the fermentation temperatures depending on the strain, and make sure that there is no wild yeast contaminations that could create these compounds. In addition, we will check the use of spices and balance to create a pleasant aroma. Now to the flavor and aroma of rotten vegetables. We perceive it as the aroma of cooked canned or rotten vegetables. Think of it like cabbage, celery, onions, asparagus, or white carrots. This is most often caused by bacterial contamination or as a result of residual hydrogen sulfide that has broken down into other smelly compounds. This is not acceptable in any beer. To avoid this, the brewer should encourage fast and good fermentation, by using healthy yeast in sufficient quantity with enough nutrients and oxygen. In some cases, this aroma can be caused by an infection that works before the aroma starts working, and so a starter can help to introduce yeast that is already working into the beer. Check sanitation procedures for contamination and check the ingredients to make sure that they are not old or moldy and finally, Avoid oversparging at low temperatures. The next aroma and flavor we will discuss is acetic acid. Acetic acid is the acid that gives vinegar its taste. We feel acetic acid like vinegar. Acetic acid comes from an acetobacter infection. Acetobacter is a bacterium that converts alcohol to acetic acid in the presence of oxygen. To avoid acetic acid formation, the brewer should make sure that there is no contamination, make sure that the yeast strain is clean and healthy, and make sure that there is no source of oxygen. 
And the last flavor and aroma to discuss are the flavor and aroma of yeast. We perceive it as the aroma of bread, brioche, sulfur, yeast, marmite, and more. This aroma is the result of yeast autolysis. Autolysis means the yeast break down after death and release their contents into the beer. To avoid this flavor, the brewer should use a yeast strain with better flocculation, give the beer more time to clear before removing it from the yeast, filter the beer from the yeast that is in the solution, avoid transferring yeast between containers, age the beer longer, or try a different yeast strain. This is the end of today's presentation about troubleshooting beer and the last presentation of the course. I hope that the presentation and course were informative and interesting. I just want to remind you that if you like the video, please hit the like button to know when the next videos come out. Why not? You got a free beer evaluation course. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments and I will answer. In addition, you can see my social media handles change on the screen or find them in the description of this video. And you're welcome to follow me to know when my next projects come out. Thank you for listening. I was Omar Basha and see you in future courses about cider evaluation, beer styles, keeping and serving beer and other subjects. Cheers and goodbye.